Everyone raise your right hand, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So dear sisters and brothers, I have a very, uh, very, very interesting topic. I'm sure uh, those of you are working, those of you are not working, uh, those of you are studying, it doesn't matter, right? In which vocation we are and what we are doing, uh, the talk is, uh, uh, will relate to your life. So uh, this evening's teaching is how to unlock your true potential. Amen. Praise God. Say hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, how to unlock your true potential? Why? Because God has created and made us in such a way that God has given us His very own potential. Psychology will tell us that we use only 10 to 20 percent of our potential. Amen. Right? Only 10 or 20. How can we tap the next 80? Yeah, that is important. So, how to unlock your true potential? Let's look at this. Brothers and sisters, there is no Catholic under the sun who does not know Jeremiah 29, 11. Right? If you don't know, you are not living under the sun, you are under the moon. <laughs> right? Every Catholic, every Christian knows Jeremiah 29, 11. See what it says. I want to read it for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen? Praise God. God is telling us at the outset itself, He has a plan for us. Who has a plan for us? God. Now the question is, that's not enough. What's only one part of that plan? The second part is, how to discover that plan? God has a plan, no doubt. How to discover that plan that God has for us? God is saying, the plans I have for you is welfare. Nice word. Welfare means, the opposite of welfare is destruction. Right? John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief, the enemy comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. Who comes to kill? Satan. Who comes to destroy? Satan. Who comes to take away life? Satan. Jesus came that we may have life. Life. So, it is not God's plan to destroy you. He would not have made you. Correct, no? Why to make you and destroy you, no? Yeah? He would not. God's plan is for, He made you so that His plans are for welfare not for evil. Look at that. Not for evil. Sometimes we think everything that happens in my life is God's will. Not true. If you die in an accident, yeah, if you, anybody dies in an accident, go, don't go and tell them, this is God's will for them. They will finish you only. The wrong thinking. Everything that happens in our lives is not God's will. God's plan is not for your evil. No. Misfortune, uh, financial problem, marriage problem, health problem. No way. We think everything is God's will. That's wrong thinking. Change it, please. Jeremiah 29 11 says, My plans for you are plans for welfare to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Praise God. Say hallelujah with me. Future and a hope. That means there is even God when he made us, he has this gift of, you know, God could foresight. He designed our life. He is the master architect. Right? So, see what it says, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. In some uh, translation, it's slightly different, which I like actually. It says, I know the plans I have for you. Who knows the plans that are uh, for us? God. God knows. In some uh, versions of the Bible, it says, I only know. I only know. Now the question is this. God knows, I don't know. Correct, no? God knows, I don't know. That's why we go to and say, please pray for me, for God's plan. Tell me your, my future. What must I do? Because God has a plan, I don't know. So who knows? Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 13 says, in the last two lines it says, He will tell you what is yet to come. Can you see that word yet? You know the word yet means something still to happen, right? Yet. Who knows it? Holy Spirit. He knows the plan that God has for you. So what must you and I do in that case? We must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Develop a relationship, brothers and sisters. You know, sometimes we, we, I mean, we pray to everybody under the sun, right? And sometimes we pray to the Father, we pray to the Son, we don't pray to the Holy Spirit. So sad. The whole Christian life will only become meaningful and fruitful to you if you pray through the Holy Spirit. 
because in the new testament everything is on the in the life of the holy spirit so if you don't pray to the holy spirit i'm telling you you, you know you'll live a miserable life miserable life so develop a relationship with the holy spirit he is the third person in the trinity he is god he knows your desires he knows the plans of god so when you develop a good relationship with the holy spirit you know he will reveal god's plan to you amen you don't have to do anything you don't have to pray every day show me your plan show me your plan show me your plan you don't have to do you have a relationship with the holy spirit he will reveal god's plan and future for your life so see if you want to if you want god's plan to be fulfilled in your life the first first of all you should give him your heart many people don't give their heart lungs kidneys they don't give their heart to give your heart means to give god first place in your life that's what it that's why the word heart is there in the bible heart to give god priority make god number 1 in your life make if you want god's plan to be fulfilled in your life first of all you should give him your heart why because if you give your heart giving everything else is very easy right if you give god your heart everything else becomes easy giving your time giving your money giving your friends giving your entertainment it becomes easy why you gave him your heart The problem is we struggle to give other things is why because we have not given him our heart we think we are given That's why look at this picture here in the heart there is many other hearts How often we go to retreats right How often we go to retreats we come for meetings hey lord i give you my heart That may be true at that time we are sincere Yes we are sincere we are honest but over the time over the years over the months what has happened is other hearts have come into the heart other hearts are preoccupying my my mind my career my job my marriage uh, you know my finances all these are little hearts that begin to take the right place take the throne of god god is displaced that's why i'm saying if you want god's plan to be accomplished in your life give him your heart what is this heart undivided undivided heart to him if you don't give your heart like that to him i am telling you you will become a devotee just going there coming there coming for meeting trying to pray there all you are looking for i'll tell you all you are looking for many people look for only solution only solution only solution jesus has become first aid box he is not like that he is not like that therefore you want to give our heart to him when you give your entire heart to him then jesus must become your first love is jesus your first love hello hello which love then why are you sitting here correct no he is not our first love see you can't raise your hand you are wondering is he you see revelation chapter 2 verse 5 says The Lord is telling the Ephesus church the you know the church he's saying you have ab- abandoned your first love for me you know what god is against uh, if you don't have first love good work they did they did everything they were in ministry they ministered to the saints god says i like your life it is holy it is blameless look at that but you have lost your love for me <laughs> if you lose your love for jesus christ nothing is going to work and we know the scripture right again matthew 6:33 seek first the kingdom of god and its righteousness all these things will be added to you seek what the kingdom of god what does that mean seek god first put god first is jesus number 1 in your life sisters and brothers if you want the plan of god to work then jesus must be number 1 in your life simple if there are other gods in your life like career marriage money etc and you're still seeking god's will it's very hard. that's reality i'm telling you reality nothing will move so seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all these things will be added to you how beautiful isn't it added to you if you seek god first if you put his kingdom first everything will fall in place in your life amen say hallelujah hallelujah so yes 
What does it mean to give your heart to Jesus? When you give your heart to God, then everything else will be easy to give. Money, time, friends, talents, resources, whatever it is. When, when God gets your heart, He will be in control of your life and destiny. Simple. Sometimes you might be wondering, right? Many people, uh, I, when I go on retreat, say, why nothing is working for me? You are not given your heart. Hmm. Simple. They don't like that answer, you know. What do you mean? 20 years I'm coming. So what? So what? You can come to doomsday. But if you're not surrendered your life to God, you're not yielded your heart to God, you're not made Jesus the number one in your place, it is not going to work. It's not going to work. When God gets your heart, remember one thing. When God gets your heart, everything will work well for you. Amen? Correct? No? His plans are for welfare. Not for evil. And if you, nothing is working, things are not working well in your life, one tragedy after another tragedy, let me be very clear with you, you have not given your heart to God. You have not made Jesus num number one in your life. He is not number one in your life. That's the reason. His plans for welfare, rather it is evil that is happening. When you, then you will not be anxious. You see, when you give your heart to God, you will not be anxious or worried about tomorrow, right? Not be worried. So amazing. Beautiful it is. I, I, I left my job in the year 1992, you know, and I was not anxious. I'm not worried about my future. I'm not worried. I have a, I have a son who is a child with special needs. I'm not worried about him. What is going to happen to him? What is going to happen to his future? Who will look after him, right? Those questions don't come only to me. Why? You are giving your heart to God. When you give your heart to God, you give everything to God. He looks after your life. He takes care of your life. And that is the power of making sure that, uh, you know, God is, uh, we give our heart to God. So, quickly, something very practical. How to unlock God's full potential? Right? How to unlock God's full potential? Three uh, point number one you see if you want to unlock God's full potential you must work towards a goal goal if you don't have a goal you will never progress in life you'll go here you'll go there somebody's calling you there somebody's calling you there somebody's calling you there you are a jack of all trades master of none you don't have a goal You'll go for any program, any program, any retreat. You don't have a goal. Those who have goals will know where they are going. And because they know where they are going, they will become choosy. They will choose the right things. They will only choose those things that will take them towards their goal. They won't take everything. You never make, accomplish your goal otherwise. So, point number one to unlock the full potential, uh, your full potential is work towards a goal. That's why, you know, I like this scripture. Uh, Haggai chapter 1 verse 5. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 5, the Lord is saying, consider your ways. How nice. What does it mean? Consider. Consider your ways means think again. Reflect. Ponder. Where are you going? Where are you going? You see, listen to me. God's plan, how does it work? When God says, I have a plan for you, what does it mean? You see, the plan of God evolves. It keeps on evolving. For example, God will not show a student his retirement plan. Correct? No? Hello, are you with me? Hello, are you with me? Smile at least. No, oh, thank you. God will not show a student retirement plan. No. What will he show? His career. Next. Next. God will show you studying your career. And when you get into a job, what will God show you? Marriage. Then only retirement plan. Yes, some people got married and they retired also. Because you know. Consider your ways. Think where you are going. Is this the right path? Because God's plan evolves. It evolves according to the seasons in our life. It evolves according to the, our age. And you know, this is called the law of insanity. You know what is the law of insanity? This. To keep doing the same thing, expect different results. 
law of insanity same chakkar 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 praying the same way last 20 years nothing is happening but praying law of insanity so what is becoming insane there are a lot of insane christians in the our church you know that yeah doing the same thing why not why things are not working why things are not working brother why things are not working a hey, consider your ways maybe god is telling you change your way change your path change your direction do something else because god has alternative plan also hello only one thing you can't change is after you get married spouse you cannot change now after that you consider your ways god bless you you must consider his ways before getting married not after that is the law of insanity to keep on doing the same thing expect different results the law of insanity that's why proverbs 24 yeah we are talking about how to work towards the goal golden scripture one of my favorite scriptures you know proverbs 24 verse 3 says every enterprise is built by wise planning look at that you want to build a business you plan you want to build a career you plan people think planning is secular it's worldly no planning is spiritual look at this every enterprise is built by wise planning become a wise man wise woman plan with the help of the holy spirit he is your helper is counselor that's why you should have an intimate relationship with the holy spirit your enterprise your enterprise means your life build your life work towards the goal wise people build wise people build just not like this some people not just like that what will happen to your life? what are you going to do god only knows oh you super spiritual no god only knows brother whatever he wills brother but do you know nothing you are like one blank uh, mosquito no intellect that's not the christian life don't become super spiritual and destroy your life planning that's why where do you want to go where do you want to go wait what what is your dream what is your dream do you have a dream hello yeah this dream night all all wrong dreams morning all head headache a go a goal is a dream an aspiration when the lord touched my life i had this dream what to do we become a full time missionary so my dream but before the lord touched me what was my uh, plan different right evolving god evolves his plan evolves it keeps on changing so you must have a dream a desire delight in the lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart where do you want to go wife five years from now 10 years from now Two years from now, where do you want to go? Some people say, "No, brother, wherever the Lord leads, I will go." Bless you, Hallelujah. See where you're sitting. That's a good place to sit. <laughs> Don't sit here for life. That's not correct. You need to plan your life well. Yeah, Isaiah forty-three, Isaiah forty-three, verse eighteen and nineteen. Yeah. again a, a, a simple scripture remember not the former things nor consider the things of the old look at that don't worry about what happened in the past don't happen worry about what happened last month don't worry about what happened last year forget it forget it allow god to work Con- see verse 8 19 behold i am doing a new thing now it springs forth do you not see god is going to do a new thing to who to those people who let go those people who do not live in the past how many people live in the past regret disappointment i should not have done this i should not have married this person i should not have taken this job the earl- earlier job was better regret then they don't progress in life correct i will make a way in the wilderness and i will and rivers in the desert what is god telling us even the impossible i will do it for you even the impossible i will do for you god will make a way where there seems to be no way you don't worry what must you do give him your heart and work towards the goal have a plan do you have a plan for your life 
Do you pray on the plan? Say, Holy Spirit, show me the plan of God. This is my plan. Bless it. Anoint it. Do you have a plan? Every corporate company has a plan. You know that? You walk into them, they will say, we want to see your plan. What are you going to do to next two years in this office? What is your goal? We come to retreats, no goal. Nothing, zero. Whatever you will, Lord. God will, see, you see, God will anoint and bless you if you do a little work. Yeah. Very, very important. Look at this, yeah. So begin with the end of my, stay focused, you know. If stay focused is very, very important, you know. Look at uh, Proverbs 16, verse 3, one of my, one of, another favorite scripture of mine. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Hallelujah. Wow, beautiful. What is commit? Give it. Commit your work to the Lord. Commit your life to the Lord. Commit your business to the Lord. Commit to the Lord. He says, and your plans will be established. Commit your plans to God. He will establish it for you. He will establish. That is our God. Because in Christianity, there is divine human partnership. Divine human partnership. That's why he also wants you to do something. When you do that something, God will bless it. That's how God works. Philippines uh, chapter 3, 13 and 14. You know, but Paul is saying, this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Look at Paul, no? One thing I do, forget what happened. We all know uh, uh, the life of St. Paul, right? We all know the life of St. Paul. He persecuted the Christians. He persecuted the Christians. When he was there, when Stephen was stoned to death. He stoned Stephen to death. Can you imagine the guilt? Now he comes to the Lord. Imagine the guilt, the condemnation. But Paul is Paul. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. He said, I forget what happened. I'm not going to worry what happened. Now I'm going to press on towards the goal. Amen. Amen. Don't let guilt, condemnation, disappointment, regret, you know, haunt your life and chase your life. You will never go forward. You will never go forward. You will in fact go backward. Forget it. Yes, you made a mistake. Repent, right? For us, praise God. We can repent and come back. You made a mistake. Yeah. That's okay. Repent. Come back and then look forward. And that is the key to the Christian life. Yeah? Jesus, you know, did Jesus have a goal? <laughs> yeah, yes. Jesus was focused on the goal that the Father had given to him. In uh, Luke 4, 43, 43, he says, Jesus said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. Jesus knew why the Father sent him. Wow. That's why he didn't get digressed. He didn't get distracted. He knew he had to proclaim the gospel. That was the mission of the Father. Uh, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and set the liberty those who are oppressed. Mission of Jesus. He had a goal. No wonder Jesus could accomplish in just three years. So much, right? So much. And some of us are sitting like this for 30 years. Nothing to show. Correct, no? Nothing to show. No goal. No goal. Paul had a goal, right? Very quickly. Paul finished the race in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I kept the faith. I finished the race. That means what? He accomplished his goal. I finished the race. What an amazing uh, thought. What God has given me, I finished the race. Same Jesus. He said on the cross, what did Jesus say on the cross? It is finished. Amen. Wow. What was finished? Accomplished the goal of the Father. Point number two. Yeah. If you want to unlock your full potential, one is work towards the goal. Point number two is stay focused. Don't give up too easily. People give up too easily, right? If you stay focused, the Lord will accomplish. You can uh, 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 unlock your full potential. Yeah? Sisters and brothers, we all know this. Especially after this pandemic.
Time is very short. Life is very short. Hmm. Correct now. And we know in this pandemic, we have lost loved ones, close people. Time is very short. Life is very short. So commit your plan and ambitions to God. Because in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, there are only winners. There are no losers in the kingdom of God. God wants to make you a winner. Amen. He wants to make, but you have to cooperate. He'll make you a victor. He'll not make you a victim. You see, this is the power of the kingdom of God. You will become more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Wow. Winner. You'll be, that's why God designed you. That's why God created you. That's why God made you. Why? To be a winner. Not a loser. Not a loser. You're a loser. You're not giving your heart to the Lord. And Daniel chapter and Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 says then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom hallelujah oh, spirit of excellence who is the spirit of excellence Holy Spirit he dwells within you he will make sure you excel in your job, in your studies, in your marriage, in your finances. You may, he will, because he has given you the spirit of excellence. You will be better than anybody else. Amen. Hallelujah. God will promote you. God. Wow. He will promote you. You know my daughter. In the ninth standard, she was uh, struggling to study. What are the subjects she study, uh, struggles to study? Hindi, maths, science. <laughs> you know, as good as no study. Hindi. Yeah. She was. Uh, she couldn't study. She was struggling. She didn't sleep for one year because of stress. Right. Right. Not. Not motivated to go to school next morning. My daughter. But remember what Haggai says. Consider your ways. So my wife and myself started praying. Because we didn't want to see Marika, our daughter, in such a bad state. Terrible state. We prayed. And you see, this is what happens. When you pray to the Holy Spirit, He will bring new light. He will show new direction. He will show new thought, new path. Consider your ways. You must be willing to consider your ways. And light will come. And the Lord, Holy Spirit brought light. Amazing. He told us, change her system. She was in this ICSC or something like that, I think, yeah. Change your system. Wow. And sometimes God can speak to us and we need not do it, right? Oh, no, no, how can it be? How can I change the system? Everybody is doing ICSC. They are doing CPSC and uh, I don't know, BSC. Let them do BSC, MSC. Let them do. It's not my daughter, right? And then we got a system that is offered by our school itself called the, uh, another system. Easier, little easier system. Not easy, but little easier. At least you can eliminate science subjects. You see? We went and met uh, the school coordinator, told our problem, told Marika's problem. He said, why don't you try this system? And we tried it. We spoke to Marika. Is it okay if you can change your system? She also said yes because she couldn't. Praise God. We changed our system. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this. Marika, my daughter, came first in her 10th standard examinations in her class. Amen. Praise God. Consider your ways. Don't get fixed. Become positive. Declare. Prophesy over your life. Prophesy over your life. I prophesy over your life. Say, Lord, I'll be blessed. Wherever I go, I'll be blessed. I'll only be a blessing. You prophesy whatever you want uh, for God to happen in your life, for God to do in your life. Prophesy over it and it'll, that's what will happen. The words have power. We know that. All these teachings are already given. 
words have power. Be very careful what you say. Because what you say will happen. Many people go for a retreat, sit there, enjoy the retreat, then they come out of the retreat, then they're saying something negative. Cancel the retreat. Finish it How are you now? Are you still pain is there? Gone. Praise God. Bless you. You're negative. What you say will happen. Remember, what you say will happen, yeah? Very quickly. The you see, this is important to know for you, no? There's a mir- the miracle is in your mouth. Speak it. You want to experience a miracle, it's already in your mouth. Speak it out. Declare it. Confess it. Proclaim it. The miracle is in your mouth. And that's how you live. That's how you live, you know. Stay focused, yeah. Speak your way to destiny. We already, uh, James chapter 3 verse 4 says, Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs, right? All of us have seen these huge cruise liners, right? You know what directs the cruise liner? A rudder. How big it is? Small. So James is telling us here, your tongue is a rudder. Your tongue, your speech. It can direct the course of your life. And that's why it is so important to know God's promises. Last point. Rely on the Holy Spirit. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit. You want to work towards a goal. You want God's plan to be fulfilled in your life. You want to stay focused. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Develop a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. Pray every day to Him. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Every day, place your hand on your heart. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Develop a relationship. Relationships are developed. We make time for relationships. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Everything will work in your life. Because the Christian life is all about living a life in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit will make you faithful. Because when you are faithful, you will be fruitful. That's how it is. Why people are not fruitful? 20 years, 30 years, no fruit in their lives. Why? No faithfulness. They are not faithful to what God has given them in their lives. The Holy Spirit will make you faithful. and He will help you to be committed to Jesus. He will help you to give your entire heart to God. Wow. Who will do that? Holy Spirit. We don't have the strength to give our heart, but the Holy Spirit is the helper. He will help you to give your heart to God. Mark chapter 1 verse 20 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Isn't it? We know that scripture, right? This is how we should love God. Pray well. Romans 12 verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. Constant in prayer. Look at that word. Constant in prayer. It's very hard to be constant in prayer if you don't know how to pray. If you don't enjoy prayer, how can you be constant in prayer? Our prayer life will be inconsistent. And Paul is saying, this is the secret to your life. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in your tribulations. And be constant in prayer. Pray well. Pray to the Holy Spirit. If you have the gift of tongues, pray well in the gift of tongues. You know, uh, what about the word of God? We already saw these two scriptures, right? Before Last, last week. Uh, uh, Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 says, His delight is in the law of the Lord. And His law He meditates day and night. Delight in the Lord of, law of the Lord. Get a good Bible, brothers and sisters. You have a bi- good Bible? Hello? Hello? What about you? Bible? Hello? Say something. Yes or no? There is no. Oh. Open it, no? Don't keep a Bible at home. Enthronement of the Bible. Catholics are very good at this, no? They enthrone the Bible. Enthronement. After 10 years, same page. They never opened it, never read it. And then they're wondering, why nothing is working in my life? You don't delight in the law of the Lord. You don't. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. Its leaves does not wither. Whatsoever he does, he will prosper. Amen. Your life will be like a tree. 
planted in the streams of water means you are living a life in the spirit you are living in the spirit you are praying through the holy spirit you have a relationship with the holy spirit amen you will yield fruit hallelujah that's the secret and it says your leaf will not wither you will never go dry you will never backslide you will never become lukewarm you will not become complacent that's how it is. The Christian life is a life in the Holy Spirit. And whatsoever you do, you will prosper, says the word of God. Amazing. Amazing. Everywhere. Prosper means here, you know, you will prosper uh, spiritually, financially, your health, marriage, emotionally, mentally. You will prosper in all areas of your life. That is how God will work. Yeah. Be faithful to the church, allegiance, loyalty. Be faithful to tithing. We forget all this and then wonder, why brother, I'm not doing very well financially. You forgot some basic principles. Yeah. Some people lose their job and then they'll come and give tithe. Have you noticed it? Say, oh, I forgot. Take at least hopefully now this, I'll get a job. You can't buy God. The lost principles. We don't pray. We don't read the word of God. Yes, we pray means, you know, we, I don't know what we pray. You know, prayer is a relationship, right? Uh, Eucharist and sacraments. We are Catholics, right? Make sure we partake in the Eucharist, partake in the sacraments in a worthy manner. Worthy. Paul says, worthy manner. If you partake in an unworthy manner, it will bring death to your life, says Paul. Sacrament of healing. Sacrament of Eucharist is supposed to be a sacrament of healing, no? Yeah. You must check if it is healing you. If it is not bringing healing to your life, you are partaking in it unworthily. It is not working for you. Not because of the lack of power of the Eucharist. Because of you. Because of you. You don't know how to partake in the Eucharist. You go, how many people come late? That day I was at mass. I go for with my family at 11 o'clock mass. 11 o'clock. How convenient, no? 11 o'clock mass, people are coming late. Bless you. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock mass. What we have become, no? What? Look at how we have become. Then we expect everything to work well for our lives. Excuse me. And they devoted themselves to the breaking of the bread. See Acts chapter 2 verse 42. What is breaking of the bread? Eucharist. They celebrated it. They celebrated. Not like us. They celebrated. It was not ritual. Those days it was not ritual. We have made it a ritual. Just go come. Go come. Go come. Go come. That's all. That's why today look at us. After pandemic nobody wants to go. Everybody wants to see online. They are saying why? I used to go. Nothing happened. Sitting at home and sitting also. Nothing happened. I am back to square one. Why to go? Yeah. Basic commitments to parents. Parents. Don't forget them. In their old age, especially. They are retired. Don't forget them. Let there be some obedience. Look at Paul. says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then in verse 2, he says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise. So the question is here. What is there a difference between obedience, obey, obedience and honor? Yes. Is there a difference between obedience and honor? Yes. So when to obey my parent and when to honor my parents? You see? You obey your parents as long as you are under their care. You obey them as long as you are under, your, under their care. But once you move out, once you uh, set up your own family, you honor them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honor them. What does that mean? That means, you know, uh, I don't rely on my parents to make a decision. God has blessed me with a partner. In marriage, it is the husband and the wife who makes the decision. Not your parents. That's why Paul writes, immediately writes, obey your parents, honor your parents. See that? 
This is the first commandment with a promise. What is that promise? You live long. You know that? Hello? You will live long. Many people don't want to live. That's a different issue. But you will live long. That is God's promise. First commandment. You live long. Desire to live long. Don't die so soon, no? Hello? Look like you're already dead. Don't desire to die so soon. Live for the Lord. Live for Jesus. Live for 100 years. 120. Hallelujah. Why should you die? Parents need support and care. They've raised us up. They educated us. They spent money on us. And that's why St. Paul is saying so beautifully. I, I love St. Paul. You know why? Because he covers every area of your life. Uh, two more minutes. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for the members of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Everybody is called to take care of your family. Please take care of your family. Support your parents. Care for them. Give them some money. Hello. One Timothy chapter five verse four says, "But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them learn first to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents." Look at this; it is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. What is the some return to the parents? A hey, payback, give back. How many parents are struggling? Children have forgotten them. Don't be like that. You want the blessings of the Lord? Bless your parents. Bless your relatives. Bless people. Blessings will come back to you. Yeah. Studies and work. Be sincere and diligent in everything that you do. Let your studies and work bring glory to the Lord. Right? Yeah. Work well. Don't get unhappy. First day only event. I'm unhappy. One guy I asked him, how's your work? First day. Are you not good? Hey, crazy, crazy fellow. Joker is. First day. Be happy. Be contented. Do you know how many don't have a job? Hello? Can you thank the Lord for your job? For your boss? Pray for your boss. Pray for your colleagues. And make sure your work, your work, uh, your, your office becomes a mission field for you. That you can bring Christ. Yeah, last point. Never forget the poor. Don't forget the poor. Jesus is telling in Mark chapter 10 verse 21, this poor man, this rich man, rather not poor man, very rich man, he came to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, keep all the commandments, right? I kept all the commandments for my young man, for my youth days. But then Jesus said this, then Jesus looked at him, loved him, I like that word, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing, go, sell all that you have, give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Mm -hmm. In today's world, we are only accumulating, right? We don't give. We want more, we want more, we want more. Help your brother, help your sister, help the poor. Sometimes the poor is in our own family. Eh? Hello? Are you with me? Hello? Sometimes the poor is in our own family. Don't forget them. Maybe you are doing well, not your brother, not your sister. Do something. Do something. Be merciful to the poor and give up. So in conclusion, sisters and brothers, how to unlock your full potential, as I said, Three things, right? Apart from giving, first thing is to give your heart to the Lord. Once you give your heart to the Lord, work towards the goal, stay focused and rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen? And every plan that God has in store for you will come alive to you. Yeah? Please stand. You, this is my, I have a YouTube channel. This is my name. You can take a photograph. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, there are a lot of wonderful talks. Listen to them. Listen to them and grow in them. Just raise your hands. Come on. Just raise your hands. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, pray. Hallelujah. We bless